It's the 50th anniversary season of Knicks basketball, and tonight on MSG, we're all over it. As the Knicks get set to take on Stackhouse, Iverson, Derek Coleman, and the Philadelphia 76ers, it's the first of five meetings. On the West Coast trip, the Knicks started against Golden State and owned the closing minutes, helped out by Patrick Ewing. They won by five. Against the L.A. Clippers, they committed 32 turnovers, but overcame it all using hustle and what good teams do to win games like this. In overtime, 88-81 Knicks. Then against the Grizzlies, Patrick Ewing again was big, and the Knicks went on to win easily, filled with smiles by 19. The three-game sweep out west has propelled the Knicks to a 5-1 record. They lead the Atlantic Division, trailed by Miami and Orlando. The Philadelphia 76ers have won two games in a row and come into Madison Square Garden with a record of 2-3 and three tonight. Good evening, everybody. I'm Al Trowick. Welcome to Knicks Basketball on MSG. The Knicks made an announcement tonight about Chris Childs, their one or future starting point guard. His broken leg has healed sufficiently to the point where he can resume full workouts with the team tomorrow. He will do that. They will wait for him to be in game shape before reactivating him. Rookie and first-round pick Dante Jones was given a similar thumbs up. Well, we'll move on now to a man whose crossover dribble was outlawed by the league so many years ago, Marv Albert, who's joined by John Andres. Thank you, Al. And, uh, John, as you know, that is currently under appeal. Uh, looking back at the three-game Western swing, the one consistent factor for the Knicks has been the all-around outstanding play of, of Patrick Ewing, who is certainly right at the top of his game. Well, people around the league got a warning of that if they saw him in preseason play, Marv, as we did. And he's continued this terrific play right in the first part of this season. And on the West Coast trip, he seemed to save his best for when the game was closest. And in the first two games, the Knicks really needed him with a minute and 30 left against Golden State. Charlie Ward found him. That gave the Knicks a six-point lead and a five-point win. And it's Los Angeles against the Clippers. A minute 45 left in overtime. The baseline jump shot and a foul gave the Knicks a four-point lead. And then against Bryant Reeves, the second-year player from Vancouver, well, he was just held right to his ground as Ewing fled by him. Three-game road trip for Ewing, big numbers in the scoring department, and how about those rebounds? 19 against the Clippers, and Ewing is just, as you say, Marv, on top of his game. And for the New York Knicks, it is a first look at the number one pick overall uh, in last year's NBA draft by way of Georgetown, Allen Iverson, who over the first five games for the 76ers has put up very impressive stats. Big things are expected from a number one draft pick, and to no one's surprise in Philadelphia, he's delivering right now. He's doing what he must do, a little bit of scoring, actually a lot of scoring, and more assists. With the open court, he's blazing away from whoever is around him. Jerry Stackhouse found him recently. And then Derek Coleman starting to appreciate as Stackhouse is playing with this player. Looking, looking to pass the ball more. That's been his challenge. In fact, in his last game, he pushed Jerry Stackhouse to 36 points with his fine passing. The numbers are big for the rookie, Iverson. First in three important categories. His field goal percentage is excellent, and he's getting plenty of minutes. In fact, Johnny Davis's job is not to wear him out, actually. He's a six-foot guy, and he's going to take punishment. All right, so the Knicks and the Sixers are getting ready. Coming up, they'll meet for the first of five times this season. When we come back, the introduction of the starting lineup. Philadelphia 76ers. The Knicks come in at 5-1. and one. They lead the Atlantic by a half game over 4-1 and one, Miami. And the Sixers at 2-3. and three. And here are the starting lineups. Assistant coaches from East Chiefs and Badger and Bob Osinka. The trainer is Kevin Carroll. And now for the 76ers starting lineup. At guard, at six feet from Georgetown, number three, Allen Iverson. At guard at 6'6 from North Carolina, number 42, Jerry Stackhouse. At forward at 6'7 from Southern Mississippi, number 35, Clarence Weatherspoon. At forward at 6'10 from Syracuse, number 44, Derek Coleman. And at center at 6'10 from North Carolina, number 55, Scott Williams. The coaches for your New York Knicks are Jeff Van Gundy, Don Chaney, Brendan Malone, Tom Thibodeau, and Jeff Nix. The trainers are Mike Saunders, Tim Walsh, and Greg Brittenham.
Charlie Ward, who is starting at point guard, was a question, but he is in the starting lineup, bothered by what is called a bruised left buttock. So Charlie is slowed up, and uh, the matchup will be against the outstanding rookie, Allen Iverson. Earlier, we asked Iverson, will he look to exploit that matchup tonight against Ward? I don't know. I feel um, every matchup is in my favor. I'm always going to look at it like that. But um, there's so many great players, point guards, definitely in this league. And um, I don't know. You can't take anybody for granted. So I'm going to play um, those guys just like I would play anybody else. I like that confidence. Feels he has the edge in every matchup. Well, I must say, Marv, it's going to be exciting to see Iverson play here for many fans. Uh, I have never seen him play in person. And uh, it'll be interesting to see also how the Knicks help Charlie Ward or whoever is matched up on him uh, in those situations where Iverson's speed gets him around the initial defender. Allen Iverson comes in averaging 21.4 points per game. Charlie Ward will be matched up against him. Iverson shooting 47%. 22 assists. He has turned it over, though, 24 times. And the Sixers would like to see him give up the ball a bit more. That was the case in their last game against the Phoenix Suns. As a result, Jerry Stackhouse had a career-high 36 points. And this following a career low of five points against the Celtics on Friday for Stackhouse. That assist to turnover ratio is a great goal for Iverson, and it will be as his career unfolds. A player like Muggsy Bogues, four assists to one turnover. That's the goal instead of one for one. The official Jack Neese, Monty McCutcheon, Scott Foster, and Patrick Ewing jumping against Scott Williams. The Knicks controlling. Charlie Ward gets the pick from Larry Johnson. Offensive foul. It is called on Ewing. Ewing in the low post setting up a pick to get Allen Houston free. And the official Jack Neese thought he was a little too physical with that pick. So Iverson handles against Ward with that high dribble. Scott Williams. And here is Derek Coleman strip. Charles Oakley able to bat it away. Allen Houston trying to regain the form that he had in the games at Madison Square Garden coming off a poor shooting West Coast swing. Ward for three. Charlie Ward getting right to it. Great confidence by Charlie looking for the shot. And that jumper by Charlie Ward as Iverson got the step and was fouled. The jumper by Charlie Ward stops the streak of Charles Oakley, who had managed to hit the Knicks' first field goal for the last four games. Ward is called on that foul. And Iverson to the free throw line. Iverson is shooting only 60% at the line. Iverson took uh, that poor shooting from the line from Georgetown also where he did not shoot his fouls very well. 68% in his two-year period at Georgetown. And you can see Allen Iverson leading the way in terms of rookies in the scoring column, but not able to hit the two free throws. And again, the whistle away from the ball against the 76ers this time. It is on Scott Williams. Scott Williams at about 6'10 is playing center and a lot of tough matchups for Scott Williams who is more of a natural power forward and a guy who could fill in at the center. This is a team the Sixers without a seven footer. They will have Michael Cage to uh, present as the game goes on after Williams but uh, Ewing is moving with great confidence to that low post position. Foul committed by Stackhouse. You see the head coach of the Sixers, Johnny Davis, in his first year as head coach, taking over from John Lucas. Spent six years in the NBA as an assistant. Here's Houston. Oakley tried to save it, but deflected it out of bounds, and the ball will go to the 76ers. 
Philadelphia 76ers lost their first three games. They have won their last two. Coming off the solid win over the Phoenix Suns, 112-95. And a reach-in foul. Ward going for the steal. Well, Oakley called for the foul. Blocking foul on Oakley. In the last game, Sixers shot 51% from the field. That was the best of their five games as well by far. Also made nine threes. Oh, tip told by Scott Williams on the miss by Derek Coleman. And Philadelphia with its first field goal. The Knicks three and the Sixers two. Here's Ward looking by Iverson. Charlie's very comfortable with that left hand when needed. Charlie Ward with uh, all five Nick points. It's got caught on overplay. And Scott Williams in the reverse. The Knicks by one. For the Knicks, it is the first of three straight at home. Thursday, the Toronto Raptors will be here Saturday afternoon. The Minnesota Timberwolves. Ewing is dying for that basketball. He cannot get his teammates to find him. Larry Johnson for three. And Stackhouse from downtown. A three for Stackhouse, and the Sixers lead 7 5. Ewing setting up at the right baseline. And here is his first shot attempt. Stackhouse. Able to draw the foul. It's on Houston. When Iverson entered his NBA life, the focus for him initially was on scoring, which is what he's done so well. But now, early in the year, early in his pro career, he's thinking more about passing. And it's evident as he's been looking for people as he's come down court every time. And that was Jerry Stackhouse on that turnaround. And the Sixers now lead 9-5. 7-0 run by Philadelphia. Ewing is working so hard for position, and he's getting it, but his teammates aren't looking at him at those moments, and that's Larry Johnson carrying his way in for two. So the Sixer lead is now 9-7. Iverson. Scott Williams off the fake. Able to beat Ewing up high, and then whipped by Oakley, and a fast start offensively. For Scott Williams, six points. Jeff Van Gundy taking the early timeout with 4.02 gone by, and the Sixers up 11 7. 24 lead on the Knicks with a minute one remaining in this first quarter. The uh, word earlier from the uh, Knicks front office that Chris Childs has been cleared to begin full scale practice with the team. There's Chris starting tomorrow. Uh, he'll begin uh, working with the club. His progress will be monitored on a daily basis as to his uh, future activation. Chris has been sidelined since October the 11th with the non-displaced fracture of the right fibula. A fractured leg. And rookie Dante Jones has also been cleared to begin working out. Illegal defense. Second violation against the Knicks so a technical foul and Derek Coleman will go to the line Dante Jones is rehabilitating from surgery he had on his left foot in late June both players examined today by Knicks team position Dr. Norman Scott that is uh, Dante to the right 46 seconds remaining in this first quarter Herb Williams and Scott Brooks have checked in for the first time. Weatherspoon decided to pull it back out. And here's Harris. Rebounded by Weatherspoon. Doug Overton on the floor for the first time. Operating as the uh, point guard. He's been out with a sprained ankle the last couple of games. Shot clock at 10. Three point attempt to fling as Derek Coleman hammers down the three. 
And the Sixers are up 30 to 24. 10 seconds to go in this first quarter. Starks, yes. Sixers 30 and the Knicks 26. Final seconds of the quarter. Overton racing down. After one here at Madison Square Garden, Philadelphia 76ers leading the New York Knicks 30 26 the New York Knicks by four. It starts November 22nd. It's the holiday tradition here at Madison Square Gardens Theater and it stars this year not only Ben Vereen as one of the ghosts in A Christmas Carol but also Tony Randall who's back as Scrooge. That's, That's got to right. add some new vitality to the oh, shows, huh Ben? It's, it's incredible. It's where working with Tony is in, it was wonderful. He's the master you know? <laughs> and he's a very funny man. Is, is there going to be that comedic element to, to his portrayal? You got to. Yeah. You got to have that. And what about you? Uh, what, what can you do differently compared to what you did in, in last year's successful run? Be better than I was last year. How do you do that? <laughs> how do I give that? How do I do that? Yeah. By just by the fact of me being there and the audience coming out excels me and, an enthousi and I get enthusiastic, enthusiastic about playing this role. Now they've been, con been configuring the theater for some time now, turning that into the right. Dickensian right town. Yeah, they're working yeah, on they're that. Right. And that's got to make it a very unique atmosphere to work in. You're surrounded by the town. Tony Walton has done an incredible job in, in producing and de designing this show. And Mike Ockerin and Susan Stroman and everyone, all, all the players involved have really come to the table with new ideas and new vitality and the cast is incredible and the crew is incredible so you can have a wonderful show this year well ben uh, it's good to see you that means the holiday season is right around the corner thanks very much it's here yeah. <laughs> all right marv that's ben vereen and it's a christmas carol starting november 22nd at the theater tickets are on sale now or through Ticketmaster. back to you thank you alan i know john uh, turned down the role of scrooge asked for the second straight year they felt he'd be perfectly typecast and said no no marv i wouldn't have been in character <laughs> Sixers 30 and the Knicks 27 as this second quarter gets underway. Philadelphia popping from three point range, four of eight from downtown in the first quarter. Lane violation again, second straight. And a delay of game warning against the uh, 76ers. The throw on the book against the Sixers here at the start of the uh, second quarter. The Knicks have Buck Williams on the floor now up front with Larry Johnson and Herb Williams. Scott Brooks and John Starks in the backcourt. Larry Johnson not able to take advantage. Jeff Van Gundy matching uh, Ward with Iverson. When Iverson came out, Brooks came in and uh, feeling naturally that Scott Brooks, who did such a terrific job in Vancouver, is adequate certainly in a big way to do the job behind Charlie now. Weatherspoon way off with that shot, and here comes Brooks. Brooks now picked up by Overton. Mark Davis, rookie, uh, second year play from Texas Tech, also on the floor for the first time, as is Michael Cage. Starks. And it was deflected out, last touched by the Sixers. Well, John pushed that one up a little too quickly. When you see a player at that angle miss the rim entirely, I think it was because he was looking for a pick and roll with Herb Williams, but Herb just didn't respond to that. Here is Johnson, way off. Knicks uh, hitting glass, not hitting the rim the last couple of attempts. And an offensive foul on Overton. That was drawn by Brooks. Good work by Scotty Brooks. Overton was straight arming Brooks as he tried to get free. And the crowd reacts as John Wallace reports in for the first time, coming off a terrific road trip. Wallace. Pass broken up. Added out of bounds by Mark Davis. Davis, a guy who can play both up front and in the backcourt, signed as a, a free agent following a year with the Timberwolves. 76ers by three minute and a half gone by in the second quarter. Here's Starks with a driving hook and that barely touched the rim. No, it didn't. Apparently did not because it's a 24 second violation. Marv John wasn't looking at the basket when he threw the shot up. Well aware that the shot clock was running down. He just wanted to fire it up. 
But it has been a horrendous a string of shots by the Knicks here in the second quarter, and a foul is called. It is on Brooks. The Knicks now have a lineup of Herb Williams, Buck Williams, and John Wallace. John Starks and Scott Brooks in the backcourt. Davis played by Wallace. Harris, Overton, Weatherspoon. And that is a travel on Clarence Weatherspoon, who's having difficulty getting started. Clarence Weatherspoon, in his fifth year out of Southern Mississippi, in recent years, although the 76ers have certainly had a miserable time of it, he's been their, their big gun. Here's Wallace. And last touch by Philadelphia. Kind of, kind of an irony now with the Weatherspoon, who's defined as a small forward at 6'6", yet he doesn't have a perimeter game to speak of, whereas Derek Coleman, the power forward, has the long-range game as well as the inside game. Suggestion is that maybe Weatherspoon is available in a trade now that this personnel situation has turned around for the Sixers, who are featuring seven new players on their roster this season compared to last year. Sure, a lot of teams would love to have Clarence Weatherspoon, a very dependable player, strong, uh, high score, got a lot of a lot of abilities for a lot of different teams. So we saw one out in Vancouver, perhaps that we would fit well. Herb Williams at the line. He was fouled by Mark Davis. So the Knicks trail by one. Michael Cage is up front along with Clarence Weatherspoon and Mark Davis. Shot clock at three. Davis. And back comes Starks. Knicks 0 for 4 from the field in the second quarter. Buck Williams called for a travel. Make it 0 for 5, and what makes it even worse, the Knicks are not hitting the rim. On that play, after that hard work by Buck, he just lost his balance under the basket to add to the frustration of the Knicks. Brooks all over Overton looking for the steal, also looking for the call, but will not get it. Foul is on Brooks. Here's Jerry Stackhouse checking back in. Allen Iverson also has returned. Look at that uh, last sequence. Scott Brooks looking for the foul, but it was called the other way. Iverson now being played by Brooks. Scott Brooks, one time 76er. Iverson with a beautiful move. And the Sixers now lead 32 29. This might force Jeff Van Gundy to think about uh, Charlie Ward again. Iverson sailed right around Scott Brooks. And that's the first field goal for either team in this second quarter. John Wallace contributes the first field goal for the Knicks. One of the qualities Wallace has advertised to his team and players around the league is his ability to finish plays around the basket. He always seems to get Whoa. it done. What a move by Iverson, but he gave it up. Here's Stackhouse and Buck Williams with the rebound. Brooks on a pull-up. Iverson on the run. Look at the speed. Allen Iverson with a sensational move. Quiet first quarter. Was played well by Charlie Ward, who actually outplayed it, but he has now come on. What a reaction by the fans, too. That was the special talents of Allen Iverson. And the steal by Davis. Three on one. Foul committed by Brooks, who has picked up his third. Davis ought to apologize to his teammates. He said something. It was a three on one. He held that ball. Had, had he given it up, he should have gotten a layup by spreading out the defender. One man can't guard three. And the Knicks call for time. The Knicks one of seven thus far 
in the second quarter. And 11. Stay tuned for details. We'd also like to thank Sharp Electronics and Anheuser-Busch for being part of the continuous celebrations that will take place throughout the season. Seven and a half remaining in the first half. And the Sixers lead by three points. Charlie Ward is back, as in Allen Houston. Iverson. Offensive rebound by Scott Williams, who has played well, and they get the new 24. Davis putting the ball on the floor and was fouled. Foul committed by Wallace. So the Knicks now with Patrick Ewing up front along with uh, John Wallace and Buck Williams, Charlie Ward, Allen Houston in the backcourt. Knicks have not been able to get anything going in the second quarter. Wallace looking for the call, claiming that he deflected it off Davis. Here at Madison Square Garden, the Knicks have won five straight and 14 of the last 15 against the uh, Sixers. Neither club burning it up here in the second, but Philadelphia leads by three. Coleman had it knocked away. Played well by Buck Williams. Ewing getting position, backing his way on Scott Williams. Well, the game plan says that's the way it should be every time. Ewing should be able to get that position, and it's starting to happen. Scott Williams with 10 points. He's demanding Ewing to come out and put that hand up in his face. Well, he's hit all five of his shots, and it's the Sixers by three. 6.20 to go in the first half. Allen Houston looking for a shot, met by Coleman on the switch. Wallace missed the tip, and Coleman protects the dribble. Iverson's pass. I believe he was looking for Spike Lee at courtside. Spike didn't catch it, though. I think he might have been ducking based on the speed of that pass. Charlie Ward. And Ewing strip. Stackhouse. Stackhouse foul. Foul committed by Ward. Interesting what has developed between Jerry Stackhouse out of North Carolina and a another one-time Tar Heel by the name of Michael Jordan, who uses whatever he can to motivate himself. John, you recall last year where Stackhouse was in the midst of a good scoring binge, and he made the statement that, you know, the NBA is not that tough a jump from the college level <laughs> and that is all Jordan had to hear and that's when he next time they met lit him up for 50 plus <laughs> taking Stackhouse a while this year he had 36 in the last game but the prior four he hadn't even accumulated as much as 20 points in a game so he's slowly getting into it this season Stackhouse tonight 10 points three of six from the field he and Scott Williams, the high point man. Larry Johnson leading the Knicks with 11. Iverson behind the back for Coleman. And here's Coleman again. Air ball tipped by Scott Williams. And we get a whistle. And apparently it was an inadvertent whistle. The basket does count. What a sensational play. What timing by Scott Williams after that tremendous move by Iverson getting free. Derek Coleman forcing it a little bit, but Williams under the basket. No one leaning on him. Got the hand on the ball. Offensive foul. Foul on Wallace. It has been a poorly played first half by the Knicks. They're down by six. Coming up on five minutes remaining in this first half. Remember, the Knicks did not play well. Although they are road games, so you allow for uh, a different uh, situation. And uh, that was tipped home 
by Davis. 7 0 run by the Sixers. Knicks did not play well in the games against Golden State and San Jose and against the Clippers in L.A., although they won both games and then had an easy time with Vancouver on Sunday. The Knicks are hearing some boos from the crowd. They're trailing the Sixers 41 to 33. Stackhouse last year, one of the top rookies in the NBA. Iverson this year looking like the top NBA guard by far. And look at their numbers as new players in Philadelphia this year. That's a very hefty backcourt combination building up. Right now, a man named Mark Davis in his second year is making people take notice, not only here at the Garden tonight, but around the league. He's had a couple of terrific games already in this young season. Take a look at that last play by Scott Williams tapping the ball in. Four forty remaining in the first half and Ewing is able to get inside. Ewing is so dominant physically he just wants to get that basketball down low and obviously the Knicks want to repeat that. Iverson stepped out. And here's Charles Oakley checking back in. Four twenty-five remaining in the first half. And the Sixers are up by six points. Houston. And last touched by Williams. A diving, hustling Scott Williams. Scott Williams has hit six for six from the field. He has 12 points and he has six rebounds. Ewing. Patrick Ewing. Brings the Knicks within four. The thing that uh, Jeff Van Gundy has been selling his team from the beginning of the year is movement of the bodies on the basketball court. When the Knicks are not functioning well on offense, it's because they're a little too stationary. Stockhouse is getting too much room. Allen Houston reacting late in trying to come out and meet Stackhouse. That's a three. His third of the game, he now has 13 points, and the Sixers lead by seven. Ewing. The Knicks offense in this first half is so out of sync. And you mentioned earlier it looked like Ewing was getting frustrated. Now he's taking bad shots. He's forcing the issue. There, there is not enough passing of the basketball going on, not enough motion on the court. Coming up on three minutes remaining in this first half. Open shot for Davis. And Ward leads Johnson. Here's Johnson. Blocked and fouled by Stackhouse. Good effort, though, by Jerry Stackhouse. Johnson actually slowed down, looking to draw the foul. Now timeout taken by the Sixers. A look now at the Marriott Marquis Skycam. The last shot by the Sixers. To Ewing spreading those arms out. Charlie Wood coming in for the rebound. Pushes it up to Larry Johnson. He slows up, figuring he'll draw the contact and make the basket, but he discounted Jerry Stackhouse's jumping ability. Stackhouse felt he had a clear block on that play. The New York Marriott Marquis, Broadway's biggest hit. Larry Johnson to the free throw line. Three of four at the line the Knicks only four of 14 from the field in this second quarter and the Sixers also have done the job off the boards Larry is seemingly shooting the foul shots a lot better now as he tries to get up to that career foul shooting percentage of 77 percent tonight five of six at the line for Johnson 
Sixers lead by five with 2.40 remaining. First half. Marv Albert with John Andres from the garden. Nice play by Oakley to strip Coleman, and it leads to the jump ball. Charles Oakley always slapping that ball away from the offensive player. He does it successfully there. Scott Williams does well to recapture his position with the basketball. Oakley with three steals in the first half. Jack Neese lining up the players. Still not satisfied. And uh, Monty McCutcheon felt that uh, Allen Iverson was trying to get the uh, angle and was cheating on the lineup with Charlie Ward. So the Knicks able to control. Yes, Charles Oakley with Derek Coleman right on him. And the Knicks now trail by three. Charles Oakley shooting so well. Coming into tonight, 23 of 33, 70% from the field. Blocking foul. Foul on Ward. He leads the NBA in shooting percentage. That's a special moment for Charles. And we're not talking layups and uh, moves around the basket. We're talking driving home those jump shots. Jerry Stackhouse now four of five at the line. Here's John Starks. Going back. And you see Oakley just under 70% in front of Rashid Wallace is off to the good start with the uh, Portland Trailblazers. Tonight, Oakley is two of four. Sixers lead 46-41. Just under two minutes remaining in the first half. Ewing with the drop step. Strong move. By Patrick Ewing, he has 11. Double team got there, but too late. 76ers lead by three. Larry Johnson doing a good job in fronting Clarence Weatherspoon. Stackhouse so deceptive with the dribble. Iverson for three. And last touch by the Knicks. So the Sixers get the new 24. What an exciting backcourt. Jerry Stackhouse and Allen Iverson and Stackhouse buries another jump shot. He's killed the Knicks in this first half. 17 for Stackhouse and the Sixers lead by five. He's not feeling Allen Houston defensively. Bad pass. Here's Iverson putting the speed on, and he is fouled. What up by Oakley. Stackhouse put his arm on Oakley. Charles did not like it, took a swipe at Stackhouse. Charles Oakley did not want to be touched by Jerry Stackhouse after the hard foul offered up. John Starks, meanwhile, Marv made a very big recovery as well. See that ball going in, into the. Uh, you can see Starks with the block of the shot, and then Oakley was there to uh, add his physical presence. And it is being called a flagrant foul. There's some discussion by the officials. Flagrant fouls being called very close. You can certainly argue on that one. Although perhaps with Charles Oakley involved, he is not going to get the benefit of the doubt. But it looked like it was Oakley following through, and uh, then, well, they felt that it was an unnecessary hit on the part of, of Charles. I think also the defend defender has to show that he has a chance at blocking the shot. Uh, Charles is so aggressive, many of his plays are, are body, all body, and, and the, the body aspect there is what made it, made the call flagrant. 
And he just hit him in the body. Sixers by six, 45 seconds to go in the half. Scott Williams had it knocked away by Charles Oakley and a foul. It's on Williams. Loose ball foul for Scott Williams. That is his third. Scott Williams, one time member of the Chicago Bulls. In fact, he was there for the first three Bulls championships. Johnson. And the Knicks now trail by four. Powell move by Larry Johnson. Boy, he looked like a locomotive on that move, and the Sixers have nobody to deal with him down low when he puts his shoulder down like that. And it's been a strong first half for Larry Johnson. 22nd timeout called by the Sixers. Coming up, the Tri-State Jeep and Eagle halftime report. 25 seconds remaining in the half. Bob Page will be at the MSG Sports Desk. And uh, Al with Walt Clyde Frazier to uh, chat about what we uh, saw take place in this first half. A clear out for Larry Johnson, and he just took off, leaving Weatherspoon behind him. Scott Williams couldn't do anything about it. Solid half for Larry Johnson, who has a lot of reason to be confident out there the way he's playing. A lot of balance for the Knicks once again on the offensive end here in the first half. Mark Davis, who played well earlier, back on the floor for the 76ers. The Knicks have picked up the shooting after the slow start. They opened up the quarter, 2 of 10. Iverson with that hesitation dribble. Good hands by Larry Johnson to break up the pass. Three on the 24, and uh, nine and nine-tenths seconds to go in the first half. Here's Davis. Ewing with the rebound and foul. Sixers now over the foul limit. Ewing had an excellent box out going there. He had the position. He owned that part of the court. So Patrick Ewing to the line with six seconds remaining in this first half. Ewing is one for two at the line. Looked like the uh, Nick offensive flow settled down after the the bad run through a good portion of the second quarter. Now Doug Overton. Back in for Allen Iverson. Johnny Davis does not want uh, Iverson to pick up a third foul. Ten points for Iverson. Stackhouse leading the way with 17. Ewing cuts it to a three-point sixer lead. Final seconds of the half. Here's Davis putting moves on. Davis with the finger roll. And time has run out in this first half. So it's the 76ers 49 and the Knicks 46. Halftime at the goal. First half, the Sixers 19 of 41, 46%. The Knicks 18 for 37 from the field, 49%. And Philly doing it from three-point range, 5 of 11 from downtown. They've had the edge off the boards. The assists even. Sixers with 11 turnovers. Knicks with only nine, which uh, these days for the Knicks, a low number. Have their problems in that department. First two games of the West and swing against the uh, Warriors and the Clippers. I think, Marv, in the first half tonight, the Knicks showed some effects of an all-day flight yesterday back from Vancouver. Just not sharp. Perhaps this uh, second half, they will be a little sharper as they got rid of their uh, West Coast legs. As uh, Alan Houston referred to, the, the weather out west was a little too nice, he felt. It affected his game negatively. He said that, of course, with tongue-in-cheek. I don't know. The Knicks were experimenting, and there's a... A turnover miscommunication between Larry Johnson and uh, Charlie Ward in the past they would leave right after the game and then arrive four or five in the morning and they felt this would be better they'd get the night's sleep in Vancouver and then uh, take the the plane ride under normal conditions but perhaps they'll rethink that in the future and Alan Iverson after the slow start has picked it up, he now has 12 points. Sixers 51, and the Knicks 47, uh, 46. 
Open shot for Oakley. Rebounded by Johnson. Allen Houston 0 for 3 from the field thus far. And having difficulty finding shots. There's one. Hits from downtown. His first field goal. Seems when he hits those jumpers, the net splashes. I mean, it, it, it looks so beautiful, even right to the point when it goes in the basket. Sixers 51 and the Knicks 49. Iverson. Scott, or rather, Derek Coleman with the rebound. And here's Jerry Stackhouse. Iverson can jump. Listed at six foot, but about five foot ten. Ewing rejected. Scott Williams and Derek Coleman coming over to make the uh, stop, and then Stackhouse fouled by Johnson. That's the second for Larry Johnson. Ewing working in close on Scott Williams going up for the shot and he was sent away with good help by the Sixers Stackhouse right there good helping defense that's the kind of help they haven't presented in the last several years this team six is coming in now six straight years their record has gotten worse and in other words last year they hit a low uh, compared to six years prior they just kept getting worse and worse as the years have gone on but that looks like it's going to change now with this new infusion of talent Stackhouse now four of eight from the line and Sixers only six of 13 overall at the free throw line next down by two Houston shot clock running down Ward for three Charlie Ward hits the three right at the 24 second buzzer and the Knicks lead by one it has been an outstanding game for Ward he now has 10 points and he's hit 4-4 from the field first miss for Scott Williams kept alive by Weatherspoon Iverson for three Allen Iverson with 15 points and the Sixers are up 54 52 for Iverson it's his second three pointer Houston run it to by Stackhouse that's three on Stackhouse just talking about the Sixers uh, Rough times they've had lately the last several years going back to 1989 season and uh, each year they have slid in that uh, column on the left in the victory column and uh, now they have a let's see Mark you can see 53 down to 18 wins last year they have a new president they have a new point guard they have a new general manager yes a new arena <laughs> beginning of yet another new era got our former owner Harold Katz general manager and coach John Lucas it is a three-pointer again for Iverson who has 18 and the Sixers now lead 57 to 54 Philadelphia from downtown Larry Johnson he has 17 good shooting by both teams here on the third with four minutes gone by yes the new team president is Pat Croce one time fitness guru and the foul against the Knicks John Ewing he was a fitness guru for the Flyers and the Sixers the new general manager Brad Greenberg one time Nick assistant coach and the new coach is Johnny Davis so the ball back to the Sixers I think one of the uh, good ironies as uh, Jeff Van Gundy surveys the scene here is that the last time Pat Croce the president of the team now was at Madison Square Garden it was six years ago as he was telling us at halftime and at that time he was here and his job was to tape ankles he was the, uh, the strength coach of the Philadelphia Flyers it was Telling us a Ranger Flyer playoff game. Charlie Ward with a gorgeous move, but could not complete it. Here comes Iverson. Stackhouse met by Houston. And the foul 
committed by Oakland. Iverson's pushing of that basketball made it happen, however. When you get somebody who can run like that, all you want to do if you're a forward or another member of the Sixers is to try and stay with him. And uh, he, he created it with his fast movement. Scott Williams piling his way in. Derek Coleman piling his way in then for the for the finish. Coleman is one of one at the line. Now has nine points in his seventh season out of Syracuse. Spent five tumultuous years with the New Jersey Nets. Last season played only 11 games with Philadelphia. Injury hit season. And remember, received that major scare last preseason. Doctors discovered an irregular heartbeat. He is now said to be okay. 76ers lead by two. He got real serious over the summer, and it reflects in his waistline and in his upper body. You know, Marv, he's gotten smaller around the waist and bigger on top. 6.52 to go in this third quarter, and the Sixers over the Knicks 58. 56 Philadelphia is led by as many as eight the Knicks have led by as many as three points Sixers have done it with the three-point shot they have hit seven of 14 Weatherspoon is called for the foul that is his third so three apiece on Weatherspoon Williams and Stackhouse, the Nick foul situation, three on Oakley, three on Ward. Quick release jumper by Houston. Unbelievable to think at this point in the game, Weatherspoon doesn't have a field goal. Bad pass by Iverson had to be saved, and then Ward with the steal. Oakley, yes. So that ties the game at 58. And Oakley has hit three of six. Chant of defense from the crowd. Sixers have missed their last five shots. Down to three on the 24. Coleman has to force and hits. Derek Coleman has 11. And the Sixers lead by two. Knicks coming at five and one. Leading the Atlantic Division by a half game over Miami. Miami playing tonight at home, and they are in front of Charlotte by 12. In the third, here's Larry Johnson for three. So Johnson with his second from downtown. He has 20, and the Knicks lead by one. How about this? He has 20, and his man has nothing. They both played about the same amount of time. That's unbelievable. Weatherspoon is just not keeping the normal pace that he does. Illegal defense against the Knicks for the third time. And that translates into a technical foul. So Coleman to the line. Game is tied at 61. Coleman, Williams, Weatherspoon up front. Iverson and Stackhouse in the backcourt. Four shot by Coleman. Good pressure by Larry Johnson making it so. And here's Ward. Yes! Johnny Ward got it in very steady fashion. Five of six, 12 points, three assists, three rebounds. Six's field goal percentage in the third quarter really slipping. That won't count. Foul on Ward providing the, the hip check for Iverson. It's a non-shooting foul. Next with their fourth team foul. And now Scott Brooks replacing Charlie Ward gets a hand. You figure Iverson weighs more without looking, without cheating. 
You know, I was about to do that. <laughs> I saw you. <laughs> I, I would say, would you give him a hundred? From the naked eye, one seven, one sixty-five. <laughs> what are you laughing about? Nice move by Stackhouse. Now let me check my chart. One sixty-five. <laughs> uh, I, I didn't look. You're watching me. Well, no, you. But to do your chart, you you had done it recently. He, he what do you think I memorized everything I put down? <laughs> Once you write it, it's in there. I mean, that's that be gone for, for some of them. School days. Eight on the uh, shot clock. I wish that were true at all times. <laughs> Once you write something, you retain. Not necessarily so. Meanwhile, Arvison uh, is a real lean body at six feet. And Ewing got the step. And it's 65, the Sixers. 63, just under four minutes to go. Third quarter. Scott Brooks playing with three fouls. Derek Coleman, bad shot. Second straight, poor shot thrown up by Coleman, who had been playing very well. Trying to force the issue. Allen Houston. And rebounded by Weatherspoon. So Houston's not getting the ball off of flow in the offense either, which will which will help any player, but particularly someone who's such a good shooter. Iverson pulling it back and then hitting. What a move by Iverson. Boy, did that excite Jerry Stackhouse too with his reaction. Arms waving. The Sixers lead by one. 21 points for Iverson. 19 for Stackhouse. Ewing. One of those games we're seeing too many long shots from Patrick Ewing. It was frustrated earlier because he was not able to get the ball in the proper position. Here's Johnson. He's been hitting the three. The ball isn't moving to get 18, 16 foot jump shots. You don't need 23 footers regularly. Iverson. Traveling violation. Now that possession, too much dribbling by the rookie. Now Allen Iverson is really in stride in his first professional visit here to Madison Square Garden. Look at our Toyota matchup. Charlie Ward, who's had a good game with 12 points. He's got his assists and they're shooting the ball very well. But Iverson is taking more shots, as you can see, and he's delivering. Iverson so comfortable with that basketball. Even though he dribbles that ball high, he's so fast. And you can see what he can do with a pullback jump shot. He sent Scott Brooks away quickly with that fake to the basket. First round pick, first overall in the draft. The Big East Defensive Player of the Year as a freshman and sophomore. Yeah. Ewing putting the move on Michael Cage, who just checked in. Good play by Cage. Mark Davis also back. Michael Cage signing with the Sixers as a free agent after a couple of years with the Cavaliers. Here's John Starks, who just made his return. Larry Johnson, yes, and it counts. And no question, this has been the best game offensively as a New York Knick for Larry Johnson. Foul committed by Davis and Johnson to the line. Larry powering his way to the basket again. They don't have the shot blocker, so Johnson's taking advantage of it. Charles Oakley taking that ball out of the basket after the foul shot. Just shoved Scott Williams to the floor, or Derek Coleman, rather, excuse me, to the floor. And in front of the officials, so no, no harm, no foul, I guess. And no reaction from Coleman either. Knicks by two points as we come up on two minutes left in the third. Two minutes. That's because they're pals. And the foul on Brooks. Basketball count. That's four on Brooks. Jeff Van Gundy buying some time with Scott Brooks. Charlie Ward has, has played him well, but Ward went out after picking up a fourth. So Allen Iverson to the line with the Knicks over the foul limit. Allen Iverson, the first Georgetown player to leave early under John Thompson, left after his sophomore season. He had averaged 25 a game. So quick, slashing style player. 
And he's tied the game at 68. The first player under 6'6 in 20 years to be chosen with the number one pick in the NBA draft. That's, that's what the world thinks of his skills. Well, Brooks very fortunate to get it back on the deflection. Excellent defense by the Sixers. Then starts, lost the dribble again. Brooks able to gobble it up and finishes it off. What a sequence for Scott Brooks. Kept ending up with the basketball. And the Knicks now with the lead. 115 left. Third quarter. Here's Iverson. Alec Iverson with 25 points. He is 9 for 16. This after the slow start. He missed his first four shots. The game is tied at 70. Johnson got the step. Larry Johnson. 25 for Johnson. Knicks by two. Just under one minute left in the third. Iverson leading Davis. Well, Mark Davis had a clear path driving down the left left side of the lane and uh, uncontested. That's because of Iverson. Larry Johnson drifted over to help plug the lane up and it opened it up for Davis. Game tied at 72. Oakley. Yes. The hot shooting Charles Oakley with yet another jump shot. He's four of seven. And the Knicks lead by two. This game is picked up here on the third. 20 seconds remaining third quarter. Iverson directing traffic. They're leaving the middle open for Iverson, and there he goes. Here's Coleman. Final seconds of the quarter. So, after three, it's the Knicks 74, the Sixers experienced than some rookie. Allen Iverson's got 25 putting on a show here at the Garden. That's got to please the new president of the Philadelphia 76ers, Pat Croce. And Pat, from the day that you high-fived everyone in the room when you won the lottery, people around Philadelphia knew this was going to be a different administration under your very enthusiastic reign. You're right. A little more excitement, a little more energy, a little more firepower. You know, Philly is psyched about Allen, about Jerry. It's really, we need effort. You see him diving on the court? That's what Philly fans love to see. A lot of hustle. What I want to know is, as a former fitness guru, I'm sure you're still into fitness, what did you say to Derek Coleman? Oh, you know what? We talked on a uh, friendship basis, and as a former conditioning coach, I wanted to know how he'd planned to get in shape in the offseason. I went out, visited him in Detroit, and I watched and worked out with him. He worked out hard this summer. He worked out. And you were telling me it's all to do with respect, and that's what the players, at least in your mind, want to hear. You know, in business, we call it empowerment. In the NBA, it's respect. Asking Derek about our training facility, about the uniform designs from next year, about our charter flights. They want respect. They make money. Money's not the issue. It's respect. What did he say about the uniforms? Uh, we're going to have pretty cool ones next year. <laughs> <laughs> I don't doubt it. All right, Marv. Pat said no matter what you say about his team down the stretch, he will not burn your house down. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Al. Uh, Pat Croce, who happens to uh, be an international karate champion, a Harley rider. Loose ball foul is on Larry Johnson. That is his third. And as we were discussing earlier, John, Pat made his initial connection to the world of professional sports back in 1980 as the conditioning coach for Bobby Clark and the Philadelphia Flyers in the NHL. Then several years later opened up the first of his sports physical therapist centers and one of his first clients, Julius Irving. And uh, now he is president of the Philadelphia 76ers. Well, if uh, Pat heard, if Derek Coleman rather heard all of this wonderful words about uh, Pat Croce, Mar, from you just now, I, I think I know what he'd say. whoop de damn do <laughs> Setting yourself up for a cheap line. Right. Yeah. Davis on the drive for the foul. It is on Johnson. That's four on Larry Johnson. Johnson had 10 points, 10 of his. 25 on the third. Allen Iverson, who leads Philly with 25, 15 of his 25 in the third quarter. 
The applause for Larry Johnson. And Charles Oakley, who also departs as John Wallace has come on. So it is Wallace with Ewing and Buck Williams up front. Starks and Brooks in the backcourt. Knicks have taken away a lot, even though Iverson's been wild in this uh, third quarter and fourth quarter because the shooting percentage of the Sixers has gone down from the half. They're now at 44 percent. The Knicks have gone up to 50. So the trend is right for the Knicks. That foul was called on Brooks who now has five. Allen Iverson with the quickness and the spinning ability so difficult and now looking to foul Brooks out. See the clear out too so the Knicks have got to help him out. And deflected out by the Sixers last touch by Lucius Harris. Minute and a half in fourth quarter Marv Albert John Andres. Al Troutwick from the guard. Knicks playing only their third game at home. They've won one and lost one. The only loss of the season to the Los Angeles Lakers. And a travel is called. And uh, since that solid performance by the Lakers, they've gone the other way. They've had some difficulties. Losses to Charlotte, Toronto. The Knicks on the road are 4-0 and for the overall record of Five and one. Lakers tonight playing in Houston and tied with the Rockets. Late second quarter at 49 apiece. Here's Davis. And Lucius Harris. He's tied the game at 74. Harris has been a double figure scorer for the Sixers in their last two games. Both of them wins. Starks. Pretty lead pass thrown by Ewing. Knicks by two. But Williams helping out, jumping out at Iverson who finds Cage. Nice pass from Cage. And the foul called on Buck Williams hacking. Clarence Weatherspoon has been very quiet offensively. As an example of how passing is contagious, you look at Iverson now, looking to set up a teammate, whips that ball inside, and the pass then goes to the cutter. But there's a, a feeling, once good passing starts, that you want to, if you're out on the court, be part of that and continue it. Now, Weatherspoon, usually a reliable free throw shooter, 75% for his career. Scoreless 30 minutes for Weatherspoon. And the Sixers struggling at the free throw line. 11 of 20 overall at the line. Knicks have a one point lead. Brooks with the step. Setting up Ewing. On the back tap, Brooks able to get to it. Wallace. Michael Cage, who will not shoot from the outside. He did think about it for a moment. Here's Davis, and he was fouled. Davis in a collision with Wallace. No, apparently Ewing called for that foul. And Davis to the line. Mark Davis, uh, a big surprise, Mark. I've been looking at his game now since the season began. Uh, he's becoming a factor now in his second year. People hardly noticed him last year. 14 last game, 22 points, seven rebounds against Boston on Friday night. And uh, he's he's becoming a very important player. He had a game against Detroit last week, which included seven assists with 12 rebounds. Keep your eye on him. He was with Minnesota last year, appeared in 57 games, but he sparingly averaged three points a game. Beautiful pass from Starks. Ewing strip. And it will be Nick Ball with 10 on the shot clock. Here's Stackhouse back, replacing Harris. Harris leads with a field goal for two. The Knicks by one with eight and a half remaining in the fourth quarter. Here's Scott Williams making his return from Michael Cage. Michael Cage continuing his consecutive game streak now at 581, which is second among active players to A.C. Green. Starks lost the dribble. Iverson putting behind the back and then had the pass broken up by Brooks. Brooks did a terrific job. Didn't give Iverson running room or space. Yeah. 
Van Gundy staying with Scott Brooks as long as he can. He's playing with the five. Iverson again. For Iverson, his fourth three-pointer. He has 28 points in all, and the Sixers lead by two. Starks for three. John Starks trying to get into the offense. After a couple of poor shooting games against Vancouver and the Los Angeles Clippers, Starks now has nine points, and he's given the Knicks a one-point lead. Nice setup, Stackhouse for Williams. Scott Williams has 14 points, seven of nine from the field, and the Sixers up by one. When you allow Stackhouse to get inside so easily, why then he's just going to dish off to somebody because he's getting close to the basket. Allen Houston cannot find the range. Patrick Ewing picks by one. That's one of the uh, only bad misses we'll see Allen Houston make this season. Houston is now one for seven on a court that he has enjoyed. And a foul on Brooks, so he is fouled out. But here's it from the crowd. They love his hustle. Scott Brooks with just two points. Well, the crowd likes him, but he doesn't look happy. He's fouled out, given his best, and he knows he's dealing with a major talent that is emerging in the NBA in the form of Allen Iverson. But the Sixers hurting themselves. At the foul line, they are 12 for 24. Game tied at 81. Iverson, the high man with 29. Ewing off a beautiful lead pass. Charlie Ward saw that Scott Williams had his back to Charlie Ward, so he wouldn't know about that pass intended for Ewing. And the foul off the runner by Stackhouse. Timeout is called 649. 114 and went on to win the series three games to two. Mo Cheeks, one of the most popular players in 76ers history. And they honored Maurice by retiring his jersey, jersey number 10, last February. 14 years in the NBA and number two all time in the steals department. Houston just cannot buy one. Allen Houston now one of eight from the field. And Scott Williams off that collision is hurt. That's a horrendous sight for the Sixers, not to mention how Scott Williams feels right now. A man who's been plagued with injuries. See Williams standing for that basketball, committing himself to the air, losing his balance as he collides with Allen Houston. And uh, it looked I guess like a head blow and that usually results in uh, blood but we don't see it usually around the around the eyes there the, the, the skin is so thin with a collision like that often it opens up but he he's shaken up in the uh, in the head as opposed to uh, knees or ankles oh Another look at it again. Houston's uh, hand, the palm of his hand, clobbering, clobbering him, and and Houston was coming into him too. The momentum of Houston's body, and sure made it more emphatic and dramatic, as Clyde might say. <laughs> yes, <laughs> very well done. Scott Williams has been a injury hit player over the years. Played only 13 games last season. Needed knee surgery this after he had had knee surgery the previous offseason. When healthy, though, he's been a strong rebounder, especially off the offensive glass, and he's had a uh, very fine game here tonight, and apparently will be able to shake this off. Well, the Knicks presenting a much better second half than they did the first after completing their trip out west, that three-game excursion. And uh, following tonight's homecoming, the Knicks will be here on Thursday night against the... Uh, 
Toronto team MCS Cannon game night at 7 o'clock then Saturday Minnesota comes to town 1230 p.m. MCS Cannon game night and then next uh, Tuesday the next will be at Orlando MCS Cannon game night at 730 hopefully Stefan Marbury will be healthy this Saturday although reports we heard today are such that his ankle is is healing slowly and you know that the product of Abraham Lincoln High School in Brooklyn you knew I'd get that one in absolutely wants to play here oh. against his uh, hometown club and his, uh, his favorite team the New York Knicks uh, I would imagine he'll come in looking like a mummy if he has to tape all over him to play so Scott Williams has tied the game at 83 as you saw it has been a uh, Rocky time at the line for the 76ers. Now 14 of 27 at the foul line. This will be Minnesota's only trip here to New York, so it adds more emphasis to his desire to be here and play before the home crowd. And Ewing fouled by Williams. That's his fourth foul. Well, apparently Mark Davis call for the for the foul. Scott Williams raising his hand, but it's number four on Davis. And Ewing at the line. He's two of four at the foul line. Patrick Ewing, 18 points. High man for the Knicks, Larry Johnson with 25. Ewing way off. At the line had been shooting very well at the free throw line of this recent three game trip to the West. But tonight, two of six. The block by Ewing, stopping Stackhouse. Charlie Ward, who just checked back in, finding John Starks. That was a three point attempt. And back comes Iverson, putting the move on Houston. Stackhouse. A three for Stackhouse. That's his fourth. And the Sixers, 10 of 18 from downtown. They now lead by three. They had made nine of those last game. And you know Jeff Van Gundy's not happy about the open threes that the Sixers are getting. And it will be Nick Ball. He's out of bounds. Charles Oakley and Larry Johnson checking back in. A lot of hustle here. You can see that. Everybody hitting the floor to save that basketball. Knicks basketball, however, with Charles Oakley now inbounding. Out of five and a half remaining in this fourth quarter. And that will count as a goal to a strong move by Ewing. So the Knicks are within one. See, this is the advantage the Knicks have with Ewing as they've had all game Scott Williams whoever is on the floor is just not big enough to handle him so Patrick's trying to post up down low as much as he can Coleman got the stop he beat Oakley and then whipped by Ewing awesome move for a guy his size and then finished with the right handed slam Ewing Ewing on the follow -up. Sixers by one. How about that for a response? 22 for Ewing along with 12 rebounds. Just under five minutes left, fourth quarter. Stackhouse couldn't find the shot. He wants the lead pass down low with Houston. Stackhouse called for the travel. Won't count. Traveling violation. Both teams with 14 turnovers. Patrick Ewing has scored the Knicks' last eight points. The Knicks are down by one. Houston, yes. And the Knicks are hoping that will get him going. He was one for his previous eight. And the Knicks lead by one. Big basket. It's tough to make a shot like that when you're cold. But he is a player who must continue shooting. And he is a straight shooter. Shot clock at six. Iverson for three, and he is 
hammered by Ward. Good foul. Good foul by Charlie. You've got to make the shooter hesitate. You've got to change his rhythm. Looks like Iverson's wrist uh, was affected when he hit the floor. Bob, I loved that halftime when Al Troutwig and Will Frazier were doing their highlights of the first half. And Al asked Clyde if he could deal with Iverson if he was playing today. Clyde said, I don't think so. He said, but he'd have a lot of trouble with me at the other end. He said, I'd post and toast him. <laughs> <laughs> Iverson is now four of nine at the line. Well, I, I try to picture Allen Iverson going up against that Nick team, and Clyde would have had a lot of help. That was help defense. There is the uh, posting and toasting Clyde man. Clyde, a very gracious, sweet guy, but never lacks confidence when talking about Clyde. <laughs> Iverson has hit five of eight from downtown. Stackhouse, four for four from three-point range. They have been outstanding. They've killed the Nick backcourt. 29 for Iverson, 23 for Stackhouse, five assists a piece Iverson got off to the, the slow start over his first four so they've outscored the Knicks starting backcourt 52 to 19 because Allen Houston has been off two of nine from the field although Charlie Ward has played well five of six 12 points you can't ask for much more from Charlie well maybe if he took 12 shots, he'd have 10 field goals. <laughs> At that but you don't, obviously, no, you don't I, want that. I'm, I'm kidding when I say that. But thanks to the draft, this is how the Sixers are rebuilding their franchise. These are two top collegiate players, Stackhouse and Iverson. Well, there's Ward on the drive, coming up short. Sixers lead by one. Here's the speed again of Iverson. Met on a switch. Now Ward back on him. They double up on Iverson. Charlie doing a terrific job running around the pick set for Iverson. That was deflected out by the Knicks. What is amazing at this stage of the game here, Iverson has played 40 minutes. He still has. And pass off the mark. It's a turnover. And Houston was playing Stackhouse very effectively. But uh, Iverson looks to be as fresh as he was in the first quarter. Knicks with the ball, they're down by one. 325 left of the four. Oakley and Stackhouse with the rebound. Holman did a good job of contesting that shot of Charles. Had to distract him. The Sixers have been on since Saturday, so they've had a little more rest than the Knicks have. Sixers with the win over Phoenix at home on Saturday. Stackhouse for three. He is now five of five from downtown. He has 26 points, and the Sixers lead by four. Ewing off the double team. Larry Johnson, Charles Oakley, and Oakley foul. See, one of the problems with help defense is if you have a team with talent like the Sixers with Stackhouse, you you can't leave your guy. If you're guarding Stackhouse, somebody else cuts. You, you got to be careful. You, you have to be aware to help when you can, but you can't give a guy room to shoot that basketball. You got to stay home on him, as you'll often hear coaches say. You can't leave good shooters open. Oakley going in underneath for that finish, hoping to make that shot, but at least he'll get an opportunity at the line. Oakley at the line for the first time tonight. Charles usually a solid free throw shooter. Charles surprisingly has not been to the line much for such a physical player. Coming in tonight, uh, he had only had eight foul shot attempts in the first four games he's played in. And the reason for that, he has been hitting the jump shot, which can work positively and negatively because he's been outside more frequently, not going for him. Uh, the inside moves. Sixers by three, and there's a foul on Oakley. That's his fourth. Boy, that's a tough call. That's a tough call. I mean, Oakley was, his hand was seemed to be right on the basketball, but uh, Coleman 
with his hard work gets the call. Here's another look at it now. Hopefully trying, trying not to let him get around him. What a dribbling exhibition. Coleman three of four at the line. He has 14 points in all. Well, the Sixers are now 16 of 32 at the free throw line. Timeouts remaining. Knicks have three. Sixers three and a 20. Coming in, Philly only 69% at the line. They are they are in the bottom run. Three point Sixer lead. We're down to 215 in the fourth. They double up on Johnson. Shot clock at four. Johnson. Rebound Ewing and lost it. Regained by Johnson. Sixers are doing a terrific job of helping and converging on whoever gets the basketball below the foul line for the Knicks. They're moving very well. John, we're seeing a lot of deflections. Of course, coaches love it. A lot of deflections on the part of the uh, Sixers. There is their head coach, Johnny Davis. Just under two minutes. Remaining in the fourth. Oakley again looking for that jump shot. Johnson takes it. And hits another three for Larry Johnson. And he's tied the game at 93. 28 points for Johnson. It is his second from downtown. 140 remaining in the fourth quarter. Good finish. Iverson blocked and fouled by Ward. Another three-point opportunity. For Allen Iverson. Oh, Charlie, who never shows emotion, running to the other end of the court. He felt that was clean. And the Knicks are now in big trouble at the point guard position. Scott Brooks is fouled out. Charlie Ward just picked up number six. So Iverson to the free throw line. Jeff Van Gundy will have to go with John Starks at the point guard spot. John Starks replaces Charlie Ward. So Charlie Ward departs 12 points, six assists. Now Iverson, six for 11 at the line. Charlie Ward right on that basketball, but the official's judgment said that there was physical contact also. 32 points for Iverson. That equals his career high. This only the sixth NBA game. One more coming fouled in the act on a three point attempt. Sixers lead by one with 134 left in the fourth. And now the Knicks take a timeout. So it's the 76ers for Nick point guards. Charlie Ward fouled out a moment ago. Scott Brooks fouled out earlier this fourth quarter. And of course, Chris Child still recovering from the fractured leg and will begin working out with the team. Both Brooks and Ward did a good job, but they've had their hands full with Allen Iverson, who has hit a career high 33 points. We're down to a minute and a half left in the fourth quarter. Next with the ball, they're trailing by two. They have to work on their spacing very carefully now, Marvin. Ewing! As the Knicks did space the court well, gave him room to operate, and he comes through. 24 for Ewing. The game is tied at 95. Eric Coleman, who has been all business tonight, played well. Iverson. Allen Iverson getting it high over Ewing. Could not hit, but hustles it down. And we're down to one minute remaining in the fourth. What a horror show he is to guard. He's carrying that ball, too, with that high dribble a bit. Coleman fouled by Johnson. The Knicks are over the limit. The Sixers do have a foul to give. So Larry Johnson has picked up his fifth. And Derek Coleman to the free throw line where he has hit only three of six. And the 76ers, a horrendous 18 for 36. At the line. And Coleman getting the treatment from the crowd. 
which inspires him it appears one of the good things about Coleman's game one of the many actually marvels his passing too. over the last three games he's averaged five assists a game very smart player and he's looking for teammates Sixers by two and you see time running down in the fourth quarter 45 seconds to go Stackhouse digging in against Houston all oh, stocks took his eye off it and lost it John Starks not able to handle that pass and Ewing gave the foul Starks was looking to make the quick move to his left and took the eye off the ball John Starks unable to handle it clearly a crucial turnover at this moment in the game as Ewing comes over to commit the foul Turnovers for the Knicks much more under control than they've been of late. With 15, however, it's cost them 19 points. And here are the Sixers down the stretch hitting their free throws. Coleman hit the two. And now Iverson, who was 9 of 15 at the line, extends to a three-point lead. Uh, looked like Williams stepped in. Lane violation. So that the second free throw is nullified. And again, the Knicks take a timeout. 38 seconds to go in the fourth. From healthcare workers on the front lines to first responders, transportation employees, and more, New York is coming together to make it through this difficult time. And Chase and Madison Square Garden thank all those who are helping us. Every week for eight weeks, we're placing takeout orders from small business restaurants and delivering them to essential workers throughout the tri-state. Plus, to help hungry Americans wherever they are, we're making a donation to the World Central Kitchen. Chase and Madison Square Garden are proud to partner together to deliver free meals to the home team heroes of our city. Well, the Knicks right now in a tough position with 38 seconds to go. Three-point difference. Knicks unhappy about Iverson's handling of the basketball field. He's getting away with carrying the ball, palming it. There's an example. There's another one. Yeah, right There's there. another one right there, big time. Fortunately for the Knicks, though, it didn't cost them a basket. It looked just like an infraction. But when a player can do that, and he can really sail by the defender, and that's something you know coaching staffs are going to be talking to the league about. So look at our Marriott Marquis Skycam in action now. Knicks moving the ball at the other end of the court a moment ago, and Larry Johnson to John Starks just didn't work as John's concentration wasn't on that ball. The New York Marriott Marquis, Broadway's biggest hit. 38 seconds remaining of the fourth quarter. The Knicks trailing by three points. They don't have to get a three-point shot. They're going low to Ewing. And Ewing not able to hit. Kept alive by Oakley. Now the three from Johnson. Rebound Oakley again. Starts with the save. 20 seconds remaining. Allen Houston trying to set up for a three. And now they have Johnson for three to tie. On the back tap handled by Weatherspoon. Final seconds as the foul is given. Well, the Knicks had the opportunities to tie, but could not. Pat Croce enjoying the moment. The Philadelphia 76ers here at the Garden have lost five in a row. 14 of the last 15. Overall, the Knicks have won eight of the last nine against the Sixers. The last time Philadelphia won here at Madison Square Garden, January 23rd, 1994, by the score of 99 to 92. And Allen Iverson shooting a couple. Iverson with 35 points. He is 10 for 16 at the line. What a performance by the rookie out of Georgetown, who's had some big moments here with the Hoyas. Timeout, final timeout called by the Knicks. Down by four with five and four tenths seconds to go in the fourth quarter. And the Knicks with the timeout. In this game, the Sixers hustling, withstanding the Knicks' charge with several shot attempts at the basket a moment ago. Knicks unable to get it to go down, though. John Starks handling the ball. 
Knicks looking to go inside. Initially, they had over 30 seconds to go. Ewing misses the short one. Oakley retrieves the ball. Larry Johnson with a three. Doesn't go. Oakley again working. Retrieves it. Back outside again. Knicks had another shot at the basket, but they were just unable to convert it. Allen Iverson played the entire second half. 25 of his 35 in the second half. John, this is where legends begin on this on this court here at Madison Square Garden. Allen Iverson with a sensational performance. Ewing on a crossover looking for the quick two to cut it to 99-97. One and eight ten seconds to go. Sixers take a timeout. So the Knicks now need a, a turnover. There are many possibilities here. Quick foul and the Sixers uh, miss at the line. Still alive with one and eight ten seconds. Sixers 99 and the Knicks 97. Very uplifting effort here by the Sixers, the owner of the team, president of the team standing there telling Nick fans what happened in case they were in need of that. I don't think there's any question that he is a very demonstrative owner perhaps might lead the league in that department. And the Knicks facing the very uh, real possibility of going one up and two down on their home court. They have won all four games on the road, although have not played particularly well. Still trying to define who they are and certainly looking for the return of, of Chris Childs as the starting uh, point guard, although Charlie Ward has, has done a nice job. But tonight, both point guards fouled out by Allen Iverson. Charlie's done a terrific job, and he's grown in his NBA career over the first several games of this season with all the playing time plus the exhibition season. But the Knicks have invested heavily in Chris Childs, who's dying to play. Today, he's been given the green light to work out seriously. And I, I think nobody wants to put the weight of the world on Chris Child's shoulders either, but I think the Knicks will enthusiastically await his return. Now Derek Coleman will inbound. One and eight ten seconds remaining. Knicks do not have any timeouts remaining. Coleman for Stackhouse immediately fouled by Houston. Stackhouse, 6 of 10 at the line. So one second to go in this fourth quarter. Knicks are over the limit, so Stackhouse will shoot. And Stackhouse for the season, a 73% free throw shooter. Chris Gent reporting in, I guess, for long-range shooting if the Knicks are able to whip it down court. Yes, he is certainly capable of the three. Although they have Ewing at the other end of the court. I think that's to take, uh, and I don't know why why they're doing it, to take Coleman away. One and two ten seconds remaining now as they just adjusted the clock. So the Sixers now lead by three. And Stackhouse looking to wrap it. He does. Four-point lead. Oakley for Ewing, setting it up for Houston. Well, that was the idea. It's a well-executed play. Put that one in the uh, the clinical column as uh, Ewing was able to take that high pass and outlet it to uh, to Houston, who had had the three. And the Sixers were not looking to foul, so it would have been had Houston hit that shot. Uh, it would have meant the Knicks falling one point to short, but uh, a nice looking uh, final play. Sixers enjoyed their 43 foul shot attempts, too, to the Knicks 19 in this game. And the 76ers have defeated the Knicks here.